Hi and hello once again. So we are on our new topic on our uh, lesson number six, which is transmission and distribution, and we are on our new topic, which is performance of transmission lines. So there are many types of transmission lines. So we have the short line, the medium line, and the long line. So today we will first discuss the fundamentals of a short line approximate. Okay, let us start with the short line approximate. Short line approximate has a distance of 50 miles or 80 kilometers or less. So the shorter the, uh, the line, the, uh, uh, the negligible the effect of the capacitance. Since we discuss the parameters of the lines, so we have the R, L, and C. However, on short line approximate, we will only uh, concentrate on R and L respectively. So the line voltage in this case, since you have a shorter line, is very low. So you have an approximate of, two of 20 kV, but there are some problems uh, which uh, the line voltage becomes uh, up to uh, 33 kV. And as I mentioned, only the R and the the resistance and inductance, which is converted to reactance, which is, you can convert it by having omega L or 2 pi FL, is only present. And that is so, the so-called ZL. ZL is the series impedance, which is what we have described on our AC circuit, but instead of total XT, you have only XL. So that is R plus JXL. Please take note it is plus simply because that is inductive. Okay, now the capacitance def uh, definitely is neglected in this case because of lower voltage. Now, how can we represent a short line approximate? We can, uh, we can have the approximate by having the power system diagram. So the PSD here is the power system diagram. So the power system diagram composed of of course, your generation, your transmission line, and your load. Okay? So, for this, you have, please take note, when we're considering performance of lines, we considered always that all of the lines here is balanced. So, you can go back to the discussion on balanced polyphase. So, when you say balance, all of the sources have the equal magnitude and they, uh, they differ 120 degrees apart. And all of the impedances of the lines and on the uh, uh, connected load uh, are all equal. Please take note, it must be, connect, uh, must be converted to Y simply because we will make use of the per pace analysis. So just recall that to get ZY, if you have a delta connected load balance, okay, you just divide it by 3. So for this, we have here... Uh, your uh, generators, three-phase source, your transmission line, and your load, which is connected in Y. And please take note to have a representation of your uh, uh, short lines. We must have a PPA or per pace analysis. So go back to your balanced polyphase. So we will just uh, take one phase of the system. Okay. And then we make use phase A. Now we can have this relationship. Please take note this is just a generalized term wherein we have VSN means sending end and we have here ERN as receiving end. And they are with respect to the neutral wire. You have your transmission line R plus JXL and your current. So your current here is definitely equal to the sending end current equal to the receiving end current. S means sending, R means receiving, simply because it has a very, very simple circuit, which is a series circuit. Okay, now we will uh, tackle it more when we go to the phasor diagram, representation, and equations on short line approximate. Please stay tuned. Hi, and hello to all of you. So, we are on our... Uh, uh, next slide on short line approximation 
which is from Lesson 6 Studies or Transmission and Distribution and Performance of the Line under the topic of Performance of Lines. Okay, from our last slide, we discussed what is a short line all about, uh, what is the uh, per-pace analysis of your short line. Now, in this slide, we will discuss the formulas that we can use and the corresponding phasor diagram, which is very important in determining the angles or the performance of the uh, voltage and current relationships. So, from the short line approximate, we have the circuit here. So, your transmission lines definitely this and we subdivided the line from the generating source transmission line and the load now we have here vsn or the sending end voltage bar alpha the alpha here is the so-called transmission angle which is with respect to our reference so this is with respect to we are in by the way, the VRN here is your receiving end voltage, and it is always bar zero. The bar zero, uh, it means that is the reference. And then you have your current I, which is also equal to the receiving current IR, which is also equal to the sending current IS. Okay, so for this, we can see when we draw the phasor diagram that uh, in this case, we can have the VRN as zero, and then this current IR and IS, and which is equal to I, is constant because it is a series circuit. Now, from the uh, using circuit theory, whatever the voltage here in the drop simply equal to the sending end voltage. So, vectorially, there is in vector that VSN bar alpha, which is transmission line angle, simply equal to VRN bar zero plus IR bar negative theta r plus uh, negative and positive theta r rather times r plus jxl now please take note that you can get the theta r from the power factor okay so we have cosine theta r is equal to the power factor the ceiling but the theta r here is dependent upon theta vrn and theta i which is very obvious that your vrn angle is zero and thus, if you can still recall our uh, CISQ table, the CISQ table means if you have a current and your angle is negative, it means it is a lagging condition. Otherwise, if that is a positive condition, that is a leading condition. So please take note the minus and plus here has an effect especially when the uh, on the computation part so um, the negative angle here means lagging condition the positive angle means leading condition please take note of that and you have the zl here which is r plus jxl always plus simply because you have an uh, reactance only or inductive reactance okay this is the formula that you need to memorize but again Memorizing is just different from analyzing. Simply because, as you can see here, you can analyze the circuit that you, in order to get VSN, it can you can arrive with a little bit of KVL, which is this equation here. Okay, that will be the the equation that we will use uh, all throughout. Okay, on the uh, problem solving part. Okay, let us go to the phasor diagram, which is very important. So we discuss phasor diagrams on your circuit theory and the phasor diagram here is very important because when you say a phasor our main goal is the voltage and current okay relationships okay without further ado i can share with you, you know this uh, mnemonic the le the ice ah. formula we're in we already described this one you can go back to our circuit too okay uh, in terms of RLC relationship that in terms of an inductor which is L the voltage will lead the current by a certain angle 90 please take note this is alone in the circuit if that is alone in the circuit okay if that is alone in the circuit it means 90 degree okay phase angle difference now in terms of the capacitor C the current will leads the voltage by a certain angle which is 90 degree please take note 
This is also the same if we interchange variables. So EL, or rather, the reference now is EL. So it will be IL logs EL by 90 degree. So this is the same. But in terms of the cur uh, in terms of the capacitor, it is also the same here. Okay, so if we interchange uh, the uh, the uh, reference. So in this case, we have uh, VC will lags the current by ninety degree. So it's like this is also always the opposite. VC or EC, the same thing, huh? This is the same thing because I use E. That is also V. But in terms of R, always in your face or in face with each other. So this is also in VR is in face with the current IR. This is also the same. Okay. Okay, let us now go to the uh, vector diagram. It must be the voltage and current relationships. So we can consider this load here as an inductive load. So when you say inductive load, the current will lag the voltage by a certain angle theta. And that theta here is your receiving end, uh, theta here at the receiving end. And your voltage here is VRN and your current is IR. Since IR, IS, and IS are the same, so when we have the phasor diagram, it lags the voltage VRN by a certain theta R. Look at the arrow sign. Okay, let us complete the cast. Now you have here definitely the voltage at receiving end. You have here the voltage at the inductive end. So for this, if you can still recall, the current and the voltage are in phase in a resistor. So what you will do, you will draw a parallelogram here. And then you can have this voltage at the resistor. And it is in phase with the resistor current. Okay, they are in phase. Please take note when you say in phase. Okay, this VR and this IR, they have the same angle. Same angle. So they are in phase with each other. Now, in terms of the voltage at the uh, inductor part, as you can see, it will lead you know, this, the inductor here. The voltage of the inductor will lead the current of the inductor by 90 degree. So what will happen? It will have a leading condition like this. Okay. It will lead by 90 degree. And then you can have this relationship, vector relationship. And this is your total voltage at the impedance, Vz. Okay. Vector sum of Vr and Vxl. And last but not the least, you can now have your VSF because VRN plus VZ is equal to VSN. And please take note, it's very clear that your alpha here, your transmission angle, is positive, right? Considering a power factor lagging. And one more thing, by the way, you can now get the power factor at the source side. So I could say that is theta s. And here from the vector diagram, theta s is alpha plus theta r. Very obvious. And getting the power factor at the sending end, you have cosine theta s. Okay? And please take note, you will expect a lagging condition simply because the current lags the voltage. And it is lagging condition. Okay, as you can see from the arrow sign, this is your point O reference. The current lags the voltage, lagging because of the arrow sign, by a certain angle, theta s. Okay, from this, we can consider, we already consider all of the parameters you know, of your short line approximate. Okay, and then we also uh, derive and uh, uh, analyze the vector diagram. Okay, we can consider some of the other formulas on short lines on the next module or next slide. Please stay tuned. Hi, and good day to all of you. So we will continue 
our discussion on performance on the line on short line approximation. So as a, a recap, what we have discussed on the last module or last slide rather is we have the e important equation in getting the voltage at the sending end and also some of the uh, phasor diagram or the or the development of the phasor diagram or the voltage and current relationship on a short line using the per phase approximation or per phase analysis okay now in this case we can recall the fo main formula that we use so vsn bar alpha equal to the reference vr in bar zero plus the current I is dependent plus or minus theta R. So the theta, uh, the theta R here is dependent on the power factor receiving end. So uh, negative means lagging. Positive means leading. And then you multiply this one by ZL. Okay, this is the main equation. We're in ZL is simply okay equal to r plus j xl so all of the uh, formulas okay or the very important formula here is this one wherein we can get the transmission angle this is the transmission angle with respect to your reference vrn and the sending end voltage as well now these are the other formulas it can be in terms of single phase or three phase now, the only difference between single phase and three phase from your uh, uh, balanced polyphase is there is a per phase basis, right? And a line to line basis. So, the only difference is a line to line basis is square root of 3 of line to neutral, wherein we considered uh, the transmission line here as a uh, uh, balance. Okay, the voltage regulation or percentage VR is the difference between the voltage at the receiving end of a transmission line between the conditions of no load and full load. So if you uh, having the load as zero, okay, or meaning there's no load, you can have that in terms of Vs and a full load in terms of R. So in this case, like uh, from your machines, that this is the full load and this is the no load and the no load. We are in, no, uh, Vr, or rather, uh, this is a, uh, the no load, full load, full load. Okay, so V, uh, no load, V full load, V full load. Okay, that is Vs minus Vr all over Vr times 100%. So that is the percentage voltage regulation. So in the efficiency of transmission, we can uh, say this as, this is like an N transmission line. So, for this, this is the ratio of the receiving end power or PR versus the sending end power PS of a transmission line. Or simply, whatever the P out, you divide it by the P in you know, from your definition of your machines. So, receiving end power over sending end power times 100%. Now, please take note all of the boxes here are very, very important formulas. And then, you can now get PR. The PR here is simply equal to square root of 3 VR IR PFR. Please take note, this is from uh, your balanced polyphase. If you're considering a square root of 3, please take note, this is line values. And if you consider 3, you consider pace, uh, per pace values. Please take note, we only you know, have this on the voltage simply because the currents here, you consider the system as Y-connected wherein the line current is simply equal to the piece current. So, the only difference is in terms of the voltage. So, PS is PR plus P loss, like P out plus P losses. And it's also the same thing with, you know, with the PR here, square root of 3 VS IS PFS. And this is times 3 because this is in terms of per pace basis times PFS. Please take note, PFS here is the power factor descending in PFR power factor the receiving. Now, in terms of line losses, okay, if you have a three-phase system, three times I squared times RL. So, that is a, a self-explanatory already because you have three uh, conductors. However, when you have a single phase, two-wire line, so you have two conductors. Considering, this is times two, if your R is in terms of 
resistances R per conductor. However, on some problems, we can already have this as I squared RL considering that your resistance is in total basis. Okay? So, we consider this one no, from the previous uh, discussion in terms of uh, loop resistance and loop inductance. You need to multiply it by 2 for a single phase line. But if that is not mentioned on the problem, you can already have I squared R directly, considering the total re uh, your resistance is total or loop resistance. Okay, I think we can solve some problems now. No, from your uh, from our uh, from this topic. So thank you and see you there.